Now let's cover the last component in the inverter section and the power flow through that component. Everything that we've discussed so far is power out to the motor. So current flowing out to the motor through the stator windings and back. Now the motor in some cases becomes a generator. If we have a short deceleration ramp and the rotor is spinning faster than the stator synchronous speed commanded by the drive, we will receive energy back from the motor. So before I, before I go over the power flow from the motor, when it starts into generator action, I need to show you some circuitry that I added. I have uh, added a chopper circuit, and it consists of an IGBT, in a controller that senses the bus voltage. So it's part of the internal control circuitry of the drive. And what the chopper does is it turns on and off and allows current flow through a braking resistor. Now the braking resistor can be internal. Some drives have an internal braking resistor or it may be mounted externally. So if we have generator action. So let's just pick a lead. Let's pick T1 from the motor. If you receive energy back from the motor, this lead, the voltage on this lead will increase. It will rise, which will cause the anode lead on this diode to be more positive than the cathode so it will turn on remember it's a voltage control switch the current will flow onto the bus the voltage will rise on the bus and the, the capacitor voltage will will rise okay now the the current cannot go back onto the supply because these diodes only allow current to flow in one direction so the current will flow into the capacitors and the capacitor voltage will rise. It will rise to a certain value and if it rises too high you will get an over voltage on the DC bus fault. Okay so now we have a, a braking resistor and a chopper circuit installed and it will sense the DC bus voltage. It will turn on it will send the energy out to the braking resistor. Not all drives have this circuitry. You have to spend a little bit more money to get this circuitry. Now what is really interesting about these, these diodes? Now some manufacturers, some different people on the internet, they call them freewheeling diodes, reverse protection, or anti-parallel diodes. I, I call them regeneration diodes. And what's really hard to understand is what these diodes do. So if T1 is sending current back to the bus, so it's becoming more positive, then T2 and T3 will become more negative. Now this is hard, this is a hard uh, this is a hard concept to understand, but this point right here becomes more negative, so it starts to pull. Remember, remember all the pushing and pulling with the three phase power? We have the same thing, but it's in reverse. And what happens is this point becomes more, more negative than this point. So the cathode becomes more negative than the anode, and it actually pulls the negative voltage down. So your, your voltage will, on the DC bus, will increase. So you will have, uh, normally say 300 volts on a DC bus that may go up to 400. So the difference between the positive and negative increases. So that's what that will do. It will actually pull it down and that supply current back. Now it's going to obviously switch and it's going to do this very, very quickly. The sequence of the uh, returning energy through those diodes, those regeneration diodes. Now, bottom line is the DC bus voltage is going to increase. If it increases to a unsafe level, you will get an over voltage fault. But when you have a chopper circuit installed and a 
either an internal brake resistor or an, ex an external brake resistor, that voltage and that rising level on the DC bus will be taken care of by this chopper circuit. It will send current out to the brake resistor and dissipate that. On ultra modern drives and more expensive equipment, we actually send it to the front end and it and it uh, is resynchronized to the line supply and sent back to the utility. Now, what I have done is I have constructed a very basic chopper circuit so you can visualize what this circuit does. And I have it shown here. So we have a DC source. So this basically this is just uh, a DC bus. And we have a brake resistor. And again, it could be external or internal. And we have a chopper circuit. So we have a clock that just oscillates, turns on and off. It would be controlled by the computer in the VFD, the microcontroller. It's connected to the gate of the IGBT. It turns on and off. So this is going to be DC pulse width modulation. So I'll take the oscilloscope and I'll connect it across the braking resistor so you can see what the what voltage what happens across that resistor. So what happens, and this happens very quickly, is this circuit turns on and sends out that extra DC bus energy to the braking resistor. And this is what's called DC pulse width modulation because it does not alternate below the zero line. It's just a straight DC. So the average voltage would be a line drawing drawn rather through the center of those vertical voltage pulses that would be your average voltage in this case it's going to be fairly high i'll connect this voltmeter across the resistor here and we'll see what we have We have 800 volts across the bus. So we have 800 volts from the plus to the minus. The braking resistor is going to see 400 volts because the chopper is turning on and off at a duty cycle of 50%. And it would be controlled by the, like, again, from the circuitry in the drive. Okay, so that's how that circuit works. Go back to the power schematic. So these diodes allow current to flow back from the motor when it is in generator action. You have two types of uh, Generator action, you have short deceleration ramps where you get a quick spike coming back and in most cases that could be stored on the bus. Some cases it may cause an overvoltage fault. And then you have what's called an overhauling load where the load is pulling the rotor and you have a more constant generator action where you have constant braking energy that you have to deal with. So I hope that explanation worked okay for you. You might have to go over the video a couple of times. Um, to uh, to get it to sink in. It takes a while to uh, understand these concepts, but they're very, very important to understand when you are troubleshooting variable frequency drives.